cooking TV show. Uh, I'm Alan Preston, and today we're taking our taste buds to the island paradise of Barbados. Barbados is an Eastern Caribbean island and an independent British Commonwealth. Uh, Bright Town is the capital and is a cruise ship port with colonial buildings that were founded as early as 1654. Around the island are beaches, botanical gardens, the Harrison Cave Formation, I'm fascinated about that, and 17th century plantation houses like St. Nicholas Abbey. Local traditions include such things as afternoon tea, sounds good to me, and cricket is the national sport. Today, we are meeting two people from the nation from, uh, today, we are meeting two people from the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. Rudyard Welch is the organization's president, and he'll show us how to prepare bread, fruit, salt, fish pie. I'm curious. A traditional Bajan dish. And Alida, uh, Alinda Brothwaist will prepare Bajan macaroni pie. Uh, just a reminder that everyone on our Cooking Without Looking TV show are either blind or visually impaired. So without further ado, let's take our taste buds to the Caribbean on Cooking Without Looking. So, Roger Welch lost his sight in 2009. It must have been an extremely difficult and frustrating experience. His goal in life is to assist and support other persons who've lost their sight in making the transition a lot easier. Welcome, Rudy, and tell us a little bit about your blindness experience. Good afternoon to all who's watching. Welcome to the Caribbean. I'm here in the beautiful island of Barbados. Um, I lost my sight in 2009, which was pretty challenging. And funny enough, cooking helped me to overcome and accept my blindness. And I love it. And I've been cooking constantly since then, baking, experimenting, trying all types of things. I even entered a cooking competition and won first prize for 100% virgin delicacy. And my goal in life is to assist and help persons who are blind or persons who have lost their sight to make life more comfortable and easy for them to exist. We have a saying in our organization, there is life after blindness. And our goal is to show that and prove that the persons who have lost their sight that you can still live independently despite you have no sight. Well, Rudyard, you've really come through this. Uh, you've really come through a lot. And where you are now is president of the National Society of the Blind of Barbados. Congratulations. Now. Thank you very much. We are anxiously awaiting you to prepare the Bajan favorite breadfruit salt fish pie. Bajan, is that a type of spice or is that, uh, is that a method of cooking? Um, both. <laughs> well, tell us all about it. Okay, this is what is a breadfruit. You can find them in Barbados or through the Caribbean countries. You can find a breadfruit. Now, when you cut the breadfruit, it looks like this. You have to peel off the skin, take out the heart. When you finish, you end with a product like this, which you would cut up, put it in a saucepan, and cook till soft. Here, you have the salt fish, which you would cook for about half an hour or 20 minutes and boil up some of the salt. Because it's very how, soft. How do you cook, Rudyard? How do you cook it? Okay. You put it in a saucepan filled with water and you boil it 
for about 15, 20 minutes and throw off the water. Then you taste it, you salt fish. And if it's still a bit salty to you, you put it back in fresh water, cook for boil for five minutes, and that should solve the problem. Okay. Now when you finish, cook your breadfruit. You cook the breadfruit till it's soft. Uh, and then you will mash it with little butter. So it comes like a cream potato. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Then you take the salt fish. When you finish, boil up the salt. And here, you add your onions, your herbs and spices. Ah, uh, that's the secret. What are the herbs yes. and spices? I'm curious with these Bajon. Okay, you add thyme, you add chives, you cut up those chives. Mm -hmm. You add thyme, but you take off the leaves, the leaves off of the thyme. You cut up your garlic and your onion. You put it in the frying pan with the salt fish, and then you add your herbs and spices. You add white pepper, paprika, curry. And if you want to add a little garlic powder to that, you can do that too. And you add a little- so these, are, these recipes are all available on our, on our website, I believe, aren't they? You, you add a teaspoon of either butter or cooking oil, and you stir fry the salt fish. Now when you finish stir fry the salt fish, it's going to look something like this. You can see that? Uh, no, I can't, but I imagine some of the sighted audience can. Renee, can you see the salt fish? Yes, yes, I can. It looks wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> some people, some people will just eat it like that. Okay. When you cook the breadfruit and you mash it, you mix everything together. You blend, you mix it up together, and then you grease a dish or a pan, and you put it into the dish or pan, set your oven at 350 degrees and bake for 15 minutes. Before you put your pie in the oven, you grate some cheese, you grate some cheese on top, and then you sprinkle some breadcrumbs on top of it. That will stay in the oven for 15 minutes. Okay, uh, 15 minutes at 350 degrees, everything mixed together in a pan. And, yes. and when it finish, it will look like this. Can you see it? This is Rudy. I'm like, <laughs> Renee? <laughs> Rudy. Hold, hold it up a little okay. bit. Can you see the pie? I want to see somebody else. Yes, yes. It will look like this, very tasty. It can serve three persons. Ah, I wish we had smell of vision. I would love to get a sniff. Sounds great. Okay. Now, I'm a little bit curious how you know what the bread comes from the spice are. Do you by smell? Do you have a little bit of sight left? No, I, I can't see at all. I'm totally blind. Okay. So how do you know the difference? How can you tell the difference? You made a bread fruit? Well, uh, uh, the breadfruit, yeah. Can you can you tell by the texture how it feels, or does yes. it smell yes. a certain yes. way? I, I, I've yes. never heard of breadfruit before. Okay, this. it feels different. It have a different texture. And uh, when you peel the breadfruit, inside of the breadfruit has some little holes, and you can peel those yeah. holes. Yeah. You can feel the separation inside of them. This is the breadfruit here. Okay. You can, see some whole, you can see a pattern inside of the breadfruit. You can see the pattern, okay. Rene. Well, so actually, no, I can't. That, yeah. That's what I, I was can... wondering. You say you're totally silent. So I'm a yeah. little bit curious. Rene. Yes. Does I... it have a feel? Okay. You see, see. you see where that pattern is there? Yes. Right. That's what you call the heart of the breadfruit. Oh. You can cut out that. Right. You cut does, out that when it... you are cooking the breadfruit. If you're roasting the breadfruit, you leave it in. Okay. Can you tell by the feel the difference between the heart and the, the flesh of the, of the breadfruit? Yes, you can. Yes, okay. you can. 
Okay. And I imagine you exterior. can tell the peel difference too. Yes, the exterior is much firmer. I have the pattern in it. You can see the pattern in it. Yes. Uh, it's a no, but I it. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Right. Yes. Well, you can feel that with your hand. Ah. Okay. okay. Yes, you can feel it. And we have two types of breadfruit. We have something called a yellow meat breadfruit, which is very, very sweet. It tastes like it has sugar in it. And oh. then we have oh. then we have a white breadfruit, which is not so sweet. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right, now, which one do you use for the bread, uh, the, the bread, breadfruit fish, salt fish? Yellow, the yellow meat breadfruit. Okay. Okay. And do you have to peel the outside off? What do you peel that with? Just like a potato peeler or something? No, you peel that with a knife. Just with a regular knife. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And if you want your breadfruit salt fish pie a little spicier, you can add black pepper or some Bajan salt peppers. Bajans like their food spicy. There is a pepper called a Bajan pepper. Is that right? Bajan pepper sauce. Oh, Bajan pepper sauce. Okay, I've, yes. I've heard of that. Uh, would they sell that in different places around the world or is that strictly Yes, a they would. But we have two, two. Uh, did we just lose sound? Okay, see this? This is Bajan pepper sauce. You can see it, Rene? Okay. Right we have it, we have it. Okay. Ah. No. There's a pepper sauce called one drop and aftershock. You one drop pepper sauce, you only need one drop of that pepper sauce because it is extremely <laughs> hot. And, the uh, one, uh, and then there's one called aftershock. When you use the pepper, you get a shock after you use the pepper. Oh no. I have a friend in Utah that I gave him a bottle of pepper sauce about five years ago. And two years after I visited him, his bottle was not halfway. But you only use to take his spoon, just get any pepper sauce and put it in his food. And it's hot. <laughs> and the whole meal is hot. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I got you, buddy. The Bajan, the Bajan, right now they're talking about fish. Right now they're talking about Bajan pepper sauce. Eh? Huh? They're talking about Bajan pepper sauce. A blind person showing him how to. How did you bleach and pepper? Yeah, that happened here, Renee. Um, I sent two emails, so I've pretty so Hey, let's see here. I, I, that, that is very interesting okay, well, sauce. I'm uh, kind of, I'm, I'm curious about it. But, uh. It's after, it's o'clock in the night, you know. It's after seven o'clock in the night. Well, Rudyard, thank you yes, very please. much. Sylvia, are you here? Do you have any questions for Rudyard or All right. any comments? Thank you, later. Uh, Sylvia? Well, I heard a couple things that I'm going to just throw out there. You said about a couple tips that <laughs> I would throw out there that I have learned is that when you're using spices that are from a jar, take a punch because all of us who are visually impaired know that, that just taking a sprinkle probably is gonna end up with way more than we thought and sometimes way less. So just do the pinch. And while you're doing the pinch, you get to kind of um, move that around in your fingers and wakes up those spices. So that's one thing. And the other thing I wanted to say is I have recently learned when cooking fish, and this was a tip I learned from Regina Mitchell. If you take and do your fingers like the okay sign and you feel between like between there on that skin, it has that kind of a dry, that is how a done fish will, you know, that's how you can tell doneness by a fish is touching it. Because otherwise it is really hard when you can't see to know when fish is done. So those are my tips so far. Why, thank you very much, Sylvia. That uh, that was very interesting. And thank you so much, Rudyard. Um, thank you. I have, a, I have a question for Rudyard. Oh, yes, please. all right. Uh, Jody. Yeah, Rudyard, what does breadfruit taste like? Okay, have you ever tasted Idaho potatoes? Yes. You like them? Yes. 
multiply the taste by 10 and you have a bread fruit. Oh, okay. And my it's second- very tasty. Okay. You can cook it so, just by itself with a little salt and eat it. It's so it's very mild. Yeah. Okay, second question. What kind of fish is salt fish? Codfish, we call it salt, salt fish in Barbados, but you will know it as codfish. Oh, it's codfish, but is it salted? Yes, it is. That's Very what they call it, saltfish. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Jody. Well, now we are on to Alinda Breathwaist. Uh, Alinda lost her sight at the age of four as a result of glaucoma. And after attending the School for the Blind in Trinidad and Tobago, she returned to Barbados where she worked at the first Caribbean International Bank for a number of years. She enjoys cooking and baking. And so welcome, Alinda. Hello, Alinda. She's muted. Oh, no, Linda, you have to unmute yourself. Speak up. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you, it gets frustrating when you can't find that darn button because you can't see it. I put a little raised dot on find what I need to. Uh, uh, Linda, are you there? I'm hearing oh, something. Jero is helping her. She... Ah, wonderful. Wow, that must have really been something happening oh. in your at, at, at four. Good afternoon, I'm here. There you are, Alinda. Yes. Good to see you. Say, so that must have been quite something to have lost your eyesight at age four. Do you remember any of your thoughts or anything that was going on at the time when you were growing up? No, I, my recollection of colors and everything it would be very vague. I have, I have only... I only know colors by what I've been described to me. So, uh, right. well, what a beautiful blue dress you have on. And Thank a, you. A trivia question about that later on. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, you sure have come a long way since then. Uh, now you're in charge of public relations for the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. And yes, we I all eagerly hearing, uh, awaiting to hear about Bajan macaroni pie. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you call something, some, there's something you call macaroni chip pie. We in Barbados, we call it macaroni pie. We do it differently to you, whereby we add a lot of different spices because we find your macaroni pie a kind of bland. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna just take over here by putting my macaroni, which is already cooked, into the dish. I'm gonna spoon it into the dish. Now you've already cooked up the macaroni, is that right? Just by the standard directions on the package? Um, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit, oh, you know, it's, it kind of sticks together sometimes when, but it's not. Oh, yeah. A little warm, but you know, it's you know how it can get when it dries out a little bit. So I'm just putting it into the dish now. And, oops, and we add, we usually add to this, um, getting everything in. Yeah, just oh, how much it. macaroni is that? Huh? How much is that? Um, we are just about. I just about half of a pack. It's, it's a large pack because I have, you know, it's a large pack. So I just use about half. You need just about half. Right, so that's about a pound. Pardon? About a pound. Yeah, about yeah, just about. A pound. Okay. All right. So it's in the dish now, and what we do is we oops made a little bit of a mess here, but we just clean that up. <laughs> uh -huh. That always oh. seems to happen. I know. Spills over anyway. I have a tree, so it's not going on the floor. Anyway. Um, That's very good. What we usually do is we add cheese to the macaroni. A lots of cheese. So we, we, we grate we grate cheese in the macaroni itself, and then we also add cheese on on top. So I'm going to grate the cheese now. I'm going to do that now. Uh, what kind of cheese is that? 
usually I I love to use the New Zealand cheddar. To me, that is really nice. New Zealand cheddar. Okay. Is that a very yeah. sharp cheddar? Pardon? Is it a sharp cheddar? Not really. It's it's, it's very uh not it's not tart. It's just like more creamy than anything else. But it's it's very nice. It makes a very good oh, pie. Okay. Yeah. And it melts well into the dish. Yeah, it does. It really does. Good. Okay. I'll have to remember that particular variety. Yeah. So we. How much are there. you are you shredding up? Mm -hmm. All right. So finish that. I what we do now? What I ever do now? Like I'm gonna spoon it into the ma macaroni. I'm gonna spoon the cheese into the macaroni. Approximately how much cheese did you shred? Um. I, well, I bought a, a, a block of cheese, so I would have only used like half, half for the, to put into the mixture, and then I would use the other half, or just a little less than half, to go on top. Okay. And these but, recipes can be found at our website, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right, Alan. www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.com. <laughs> little commercial there. Very good. Renee, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we add, I, I say our, our macaroni pie, cheap ma macaroni pie is different to us because we use like ketchup, we use mustard. So those are the things that I'm going to, I'm use onion. So I have a little bit of onion that I have chopped. Because <clears throat> it gives us, a, I guess it's a very nice flavor, you know, the, the fresh onion. And we use a little bit, a little bit of um. We also use some people also use sweet pepper, that gives it a nice, a nice little, nice taste. So I'm going to add some onion. I'm going to spoon in some onion to the mixture. Is that uh, an onion powder? Is that onion that you pre-cut? That I have grated. I grated the onion before. Oh, you've already pre-grated that. Approximately how much is that? Um, about ha a half of an onion. About half, a half an onion. onion. Okay. Yeah. Because I like, I, I somehow like the onion taste rather than the powder, the onion powder. Okay. Put in the onion. You can put it, I'm going to put in some sweet pepper, as I said, as well. I have some sweet pepper already chopped. I'm going to put a few pieces in the, in the mixture as well. As I tend to like that. That gives it a good flavor. And then you're going to add Ketchup and mustard. Ketchup, because that really gives it a good, oh, nice tangy. Add some tanginess to it. I'm going to squeeze some mustard out here in this. Um, this measuring spoon. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure. That's just yeah. regular yellow mustard? Yeah. Sometimes we use the mustard as well, but the this regular mustard is fine. I couldn't get the honey mustard this time, which I usually like because it gives it a different taste altogether. Yes, it is. I like honey mustard too. Yeah. Oh, this mustard is quite okay. Awesome. Yeah. So the honey mustard, mustard goes in now. Yeah. Um, I'm fine. Yeah. So the mustard goes in. Then, except. Spoon it in a bit and just stir it in. Make sure it goes in. Right, it's in. Then I use, this is almost the same. I use the, I will put the ketchup, ketchup in next. Ketchup goes in next. Ketchup, okay. Approximately how much? Um, This would be what, a quarter spoon? I'm not sure the measurement of the spoon, honestly. I have, because these spoons, I, I usually have braille spoons. My spoons are usually braille, but for some reason, I could not find them. So I had to use the regular spoons, which I'm not totally familiar with. It. But it's no more than a quart, uh, quarter of a, of a cup, I would say. Oh, a spoon. quarter of a cup, okay. Yes, yeah, so no more than that. Add that in. You have to stick it in. Right, and then I'm going to use the other spoon, the big day spoon, to mix everything in nicely before I put the cheese on top. Here, I usually keep a towel that I can 
clean my hands. So I'm spooning everything into this dish. You're just kind of mixing it all up together, right? Yeah, I'm mixing it all up now. So everything is nice yeah. mixed in. And then the last thing to do would be to add the cheese on top and then place it in the oven. <laughs> you just kind of sprinkle the cheese across the top, right? Yeah, I usually like to um, put it, you know, use it, take it out with my hands so I can sh be sure that the, that the entire top is so, covered. Uh, so it's spread evenly. Yes, I, yes, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Uh, but you add it on the top. It's not mixed in with everything else. Well, some is mixed in, as I said in the beginning, some is mixed in, but the last, just before you put in the oven, we like to have that, that, um, that little bit of cheese on top where you can just- Save some it. for the topping. Okay, yep. great. So we're about to get that topping now. I'm about to add the, the top, the cheese on top. And this is what it is. I'm just putting it in with my hands, as I said, because I like to know that it's covered. And you just kind of evenly sprinkle it or make sure that it's even yeah, across. But evenly, so the entire thing. That's some kind of a casserole dish that is uh, able to be put in the oven? Yeah, yeah, it has to be, it has to be baked. Definitely has to be baked. Okay. I use this stuff, it's all sprinkled in, but I usually like to use a spoon to just kind of, the back of the spoon to kind of just, you know, make sure that I have it. All over the edge, I do understand. Yes, yeah, so that's what I did. So, this is the pie to go in the oven, and I can show you what it looks like when it comes yes. out. It looks delicious and it tastes even more delicious. So, just give me a minute and just put my hands. Sylvia. Alan, I'm just thinking all of us Americans are going, what are you doing to mac and cheese? <laughs> but I actually love peas. I love green peas and mac and cheese, which is great. But I'm, I'm going, this actually is something I would try. I do have a question. Are the onions sauteed or are those raw onions that you're putting in? No, I like them raw. I like to put them. I like yes. them give it a nice. So uh, it's good when it's sorted as well. But I, I like to like them raw. And the finished product, if you can see, wait, let me bring it a little closer here. And this is what it looks like as it's finished. Can you? Tip that forward just a little bit without spilling it. I think, can you? So we, because right now we, we just see the side of the bowl. Oh, wait, move it around a bit. Alan, my tip only it. tip is go and give this a try because it sounds creative and Thank interesting you, and, and actually you. delicious. Nice. I think it's Very sounding good. pretty. Ah, is that it? Yes. Oh, that's great. Thank you, That's pretty darn good too. I'm not in agreement on the peas because I'm not a peas person, but the rest of it sounds really great. Yeah, it is tasty. Very, very tasty. I was very glad to see that you're using a tray and I want to remind everybody how wonderful trays are and clean up afterwards, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive for spilling everything on the counter and you know having to do that extra cleanup. I love yes. this. And yes, uh, you recognize some of your spices by smell? Most of them I recognize by smell. I have my spices labeled in Braille. But I have to get them. Okay. Labels. My labels are not staying. They're not staying. Hey, what the Do you have uh, timers that you use to time your baking time? Most of the time I just use my watch. I don't have a timer, but I have, of course, oh, there's okay. a timer. I phone, so I use that sometimes, but most of the times I use just my watch. Okay, I, I forgot to ask you, you have a Braille watch? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, I, I, I guess I didn't ask before if you were totally blind or had a little bit of eyesight left. Are you no, totally? I'm totally blind. Oh, okay. Well, not that that's okay, but you know what I mean. 
Um, anyways, uh, Sylvia, anything else? Yeah. I'm, I'm running off to give this a try, Alan. <laughs> All right. I, it does sound really good. <clears throat> I am getting hungry. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. And uh, I have a question. Oh, yes, a question. Jody. Hi, Linda. That sounds fabulous. I don't know about the New Zealand cheese. I think we can get it here in the States. I'll have to look for it. But how many people will that casserole feed? This will serve at least four people that eat well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That means three of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's me and Alan. We'll split that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, just a reminder, if you'd like Rudyard or Alinda's recipes, just go to our website, which is www.cookingwithoutlooking.com tvshow.wordpress.com and they will be listed right there near the front. Well, next we have straight from the get-go. Whoops. Uh, next we have Roger Vaughn. Roger Vaughn is with the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. And uh, Roger could you please tell us a little something about your organization? We do have Roger, right? Uh, Roger? Well, I know that they work with blind and visually impaired people in Barbados. He needs to unmute. Ah, you are muted. Oh, no. That happens all the time. In a way, I'm very happy that most of you all mute, except for those of us that are actually on the air. Because yeah, yeah. that's good. Even can you, you there? see me good? Yes, I'm here. Are you? Oh, Roger! Uh, welcome to our cooking without looking show. Um, tell thank us. Thank you. Well, I've already introduced you, sort of, and I've I've uh, I mentioned that you are with the uh, National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. Am I right? That's correct. And what is your position there? I am a floor member. I'm one of the directors on the executive. I've been You're on the organization. The right, right. So I'm, my position is called floor member. We have three, three floor members. Okay. Well, tell us so a I'm more one of about the three your organization, members. please. Okay. My, the organization, the National United Society of the Blind, has been around since 1974. It was formed by six persons who are blind and who thought that they needed to have a, a voice to speak out and to represent blind and visually impaired persons. Yes, there was another organization, but they felt that they w wanted to have a better, a, a more, have a hands-on appeal because the other organization at the time was an organization that was made up of persons who can see who did for the blind. So this was an, the organization where blind and visually impaired persons had hands-on experience and dealing with their own affairs. Okay, that sounds, uh, that's very good because we have a couple of organizations here in the United States. We have the American Council of the Blind, and we have the National Federation of the Blind, which are made up of blind people also. And would they, have you heard of these organizations? Are they somewhat similar to what uh, the um, National United Society of the Blind of Barbados is? No, I haven't heard the names. I, I, I don't know. I caught the names correct from what you said, but it would be similar because uh, in terms of being organizations where blind persons are, down, are, are the main, main members and who run the affairs. Yes, we have persons who are cited, as we said, we call them associate members and they are there to assist us and work with yeah, yes. our alone. Yes. Now, I'm a little bit curious as to how many people total are in Barbados. Do you have any, have any idea? And what percentage or how many people are blind? Do you have any idea? This, this, this is not clear. Um, it could be about 
10% of the population to be blind, but it's obvious that 10% don't come forward to the organization. For an organization that, for a population of close to 300,000, so if you could work out your percentages, that is how it should be, but uh, about 10% of persons who are blind, but we mainly have a lot of elderly persons who are blind. The population of blind children is very small. But sort of like it is almost everywhere. The uh, majority yeah. of the elderly people is that macular degeneration as it is here in the United States? And glaucoma is one of the main, and, and glaucoma, sometimes okay. and because of diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, first who are blind to diabetes, and, and, and glaucoma. And macular degeneration, I don't think it's as major here, but you do have some cases. Of it, okay. a person okay. then blind like from forty and up, but then you do have the young ones, and then the usual things were accidents and other things that do occur. Right. Yeah. There's always a percentage of that. That's kind of interesting. So the demographics are a little bit different, but the overall population is very similar. It sounds. Yeah. Uh, now, is is uh, are you just one island, or are you a group of islands? One island. Barbados is one island, the most easterly of the of the islands in the Caribbean chain. If you if you most of the islands go in the chain, and we are the most eastern. So we are out there. Some people say we are not part of the Caribbean. We are just slightly furthest east of the of the Caribbean islands. And Trinidad and Tobago are two cities on your island, right? No, okay. Trinidad and Tobago is a separate island. And oh. uh, I'm not sure. Um, so, so, so less of us. And oh, okay. Island. So, Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island independent state in the Caribbean, but we are just middle. There was a small island, one very small, the Pelican, which was, but that has been joined onto the island. It's all part of our It's very small, but it was never identified as an island. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get it at all. That's uh, very interesting. Uh, when I was a small child, my grandmother took an extended cruise, and I know that she said she went to and Tobago. I don't know. I think she said she went to the Barbados too, but I was only five or six years old then. Uh, that I'm not gonna. Wow, that's a long time ago. Right, because right, Trinidad is further south of us, uh, closer to Venezuela. Okay. Now, as I remember, one of the things in my introduction was that you guys have quite a cave system down there, known as the uh, Harrison Cave System. Is that right? Yes, the Harrison Cave is the Harrison Cave is a because of Barbados is main rock structure is made of Barbados is a limestone island made of limestone and not so a lot of the islands are volcanic and Barbados is limestone and because of the limestone and the what and over the years in with they have a lot of on we have a lot of underground caves and underground rivers and streams so the dripping causes if you know your geography the stalagmites and the stalactites like all yes, these like do. icy clouds. I let icicles from the roof and from the ceiling. So what we have done, what the government did a number of years ago is develop the develop the interior in terms of providing safe passage for persons to tour. You can't touch the icicles, you can't touch the stalag the, 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 the stalactites and the stalagmites, but you can go on a tram ride and they also have a natural one of which was added recently where you can actually go into the hole and, and tour if you if you're the more rugged one to have that actual walk through tour but that is an additional i've never been on that one when i had some side that have been on the on the regular ride with the tram uh, that's amazing they've got tram you can ride through on in there is it yes on the Accessible right. to people who are visually impaired, blind and visually impaired. But what they would do is be the, the tour guide. Would, you, if you wanted thing, the tour guide would describe 
and, and give you a feel and feel of it. So you would you would tour and you would get off there. There's about one or two. I haven't been on the tour for a while. I think that at least two points you get off the tram, but they have different descriptions and different areas where the, the stalactites I think are formed. So it's it's all in is is a is a beautiful sight to behold. And I guess for the persons who are blind, I, I haven't been since I've lost all my sight, but they would have to tell you how their how their experience is for them because I think as we all know as blind person, it depends on how the person describes it. That's very true. How you perceive it too. Yes, I used to love yeah. to go exploring in caves. I'm an old spelunker from way back. And one of the very first lessons I learned was the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite. Oh, yeah. The stalactite yeah. holds on tight to the ceiling. Yeah. The yes. stalagmite might get up to the ceiling. <laughs> and that's but how we learned the difference, stalactite and stalagmite. That's one of the few things I remember from uh, grade school. I, I from grade school, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I remember. Uh, another <laughs> thing you were talking about down there uh, in 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 your capital. Oh, I'm, great, oh, I'm sorry, Sylvia. You had a question. I, I have been to Barbados, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, one thing is that you don't. You're not allowed to touch them. So, but I. Roger, I have a question. Yes, go this ahead. Is Jody, is uh, Barbados part of what we call the ABC Islands? No, the ABC Islands are the Dutch islands of Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. They are oh, just, Bonaire. Okay. Bonaire. They, 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 are, they were they were settled by the Dutch. Barbados is English speaking. The ABC Islands are Dutch islands. Oh, okay. Thank you. They, they speak Dutch. Yeah. So now your your islands were found. This is Sylvia. Around sixteen fifty four, give or take. Sylvia and I have been. Repeat. Oh, uh, your your uh, island was basically uh, settled around sixteen fifty, give or take, because it says here the uh, son of this sixteen fifty four that I found it, and. Uh, you have a lot of uh, nice old houses, 17th century plantation houses. Is that right? Yes. We, they we, have tours and things they, they, Yes, there are some that still exist. It's so the plantation houses, because remember, within the Caribbean, the whole, it was uh, uh, mainly a uh, sugar plantation and the, and, the slave, and the slave trade. So... The plantation houses were where the slave, um, the, the plantation owner lived, and most of them, you know, are, are some are still around. In uh, one or two hours, uh, are there in this, you know, as tourists, as, as they can tour. So Saint Nicholas Abbey. Yes, that is one one of the yeah that is one of the main ones that you can That's tour. Interesting. Right? Yeah. And think about it about those yeah. Um. The, um, but your island was basically founded around 1654 and uh, uh, the beaches, oh, I was gonna ask, yes, are you guys accepting tourists now? <laughs> yeah, they're, no, they're opening slowly, and, but, with, but you have to follow the protocols. Everything and, is the protocols. Now. Okay, but okay, so slowly. you're slowly getting back to normal again, right? Trying to trying to we're trying to you know every time you go forward you hear a different case but right now we are trying to there's yeah, you know, kind of that way all over uh yeah. cruise ships come into your area and they're not going out of florida yet as i remember if i'm not mistaken uh, i feel like of new york and florida but i guess they are not full Okay, as far as I know, they're not coming out of Florida yet, but I'm not absolutely sure about that. Uh, you also have an airport there too? Yes, uh, Bradley Adams International Airport. Yeah. Okay, so we could fly down for a vacation. Yes, you can. And how do they feel about guide dogs down there? The guide dogs, I, th 
they are not predominant in Barbados right now. I don't. There are no. There are no blind persons here with the guide dogs, and I think the law would change to accommodate it. But I would have. To, I don't want to guide you wrong on that. Well, you do understand. Question. Check with our uh, with with our Department of Agriculture, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got yeah. it. All right. That was a better thing to do. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to tell us about Barbados or about the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados? Um, first of all, I would say about the National United Society of the Blind is that it is an organization made up of bl mainly blind and vision impaired persons, in which we were at providing that type of peer counseling to members when they become blind and vision impaired and also provide opportunities for them, educating the public and also the members, sensitizing the public about blindness issues and encouraging the public and also in getting, um, uh, taking care of their eyes and uh, to prevent blindness. We also uh, work at assisting members where they are in terms of in various social services and also in, in sometimes providing them with sponsorship and training. So, and, and in, in a whole trying to enhance the life of a blind or vision impaired person and also enhance to try to change the attitude because persons, we still consistently have to work against, against, with, against negative attitudes to to the blind or even to persons with disability. So that is also a constant um, challenge. In terms of Barbados, when time come, you can make your trip to Barbados. It is an island that was British, settled by the British and we were settled by the British, but so we evolved. The only island that has never changed hands in terms of the most of the Caribbean islands were either owned by the French and then won by the British or by the Spanish and then the British, but Barbados is the only island that remained British from the time of its colonization before. But you are an independent country, is that right? Yeah, yes, yes, we are independent. We have been independent since 1966. November the 30th is our independence anniversary. Independence Day, okay. Well, Roger, I'd like to say thank you very much uh, to you and uh, Rudyard and Alinda. And I wonder if we have any questions from our uh, virtual audience out there today, Renee. Let's, let's see. First, I want to say hi to my cousin. Hello, Thierry. How are you? <laughs> He's calling. Hey, Gary. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but okay. Hi. <laughs> Um, he, he's um, visually impaired and he's a chef and he's in Belgium. So um, I don't know, Thierry, I've, I've always heard that uh, Belgian cooks are almost even better than French cooks. What do you say? <laughs> That's a leading question, I think. <laughs> I know. I will go there. <laughs> okay. I will. You said um, Bel he's Belgian cook. Yes. Yeah, I was my side. No, you were. She was referring to her cousin as what type of cook? A Belgian. Yes, he's from Belgium. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? No. I can hear you now. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Gary. Oh, is that him? Yes, that's him. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. People from all over the world watch this show, don't they? Yeah. What really makes me amazed. Oh, this all. Belgium uh, right now. I'm curious. What, what? Time is it? He, what was that? Which? I, I was asking what time it was in Belgium. I'm trying to figure um, out now over there. Now it's uh, almost 10 o'clock at the evening. 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for staying up and watching that. <laughs> 10 o'clock is practically past my bedtime. It's getting real close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do we have some other questions? Much earlier. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions out there? I don't see any on here, but if someone wants to just unmute and ask a question, go for it. 
I don't have a question, but um, being from Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, I consider to be my second home. And, and you know, all these dishes that, that were served up um, via this, this platform, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> That's good. It's good. It did sound really good, didn't it? Now, um, at the very beginning of the show, I made a wonderful comment about Alinda's very nice blue dress. For those of you who have been watching our show for a while and know a little bit about me, and that doesn't count you, Renee, either. No, no, no. The only thing unusual about what I said, oh, have we got an answer? Have we got an up? Have we got something? Well, Alinda, Alinda, your dress, I'm sure, is very beautiful, and I'm sure it is a very nice color of blue, but I can hardly see the screen up in front of me. I can't even tell if it's a man or a woman. It's just kind of a shape up there. I have absolutely no color vision. Oh, well, gave it away. Nice. Either you or Renee gave it away in the beginning when they were talking about your very nice blue dress. So I made a comment about it. Renee is a culprit who gave me away. <laughs> Was that it? Uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that you don't necessarily have to see everything to That's know what's going on in the world. You know, we have our minds. I am use it wisely. As blind and visually impaired persons, we, we visualize things very much. And that's all we have seen. <laughs> yes. But there are other ways of seeing other than with your eyes. That's right. Use our the sense world of is a very beautiful place to listen to. And sometimes it's a very beautiful place to smell, especially yeah. when the hot suckler orange blossom are blooming. Oh, I love that. And new mowed grass. Oh, I like the smell of new mowed grass too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rain on it, just a little rain, a hint of rain. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You guys sound like you live in a little tropical paradise down there with some I absolutely think, wonderful. We do. Food. We do. One of these days, I'm sure going to get down there. Renee, maybe we can make do a show down there. Well, that would be that on location, would be great. isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. not, and it's not all that far away from uh, Florida, I don't think, right? The mileage is. Yes. We call it Little Heaven. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Right. <laughs> I think it's Florida. 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 It's just so, you know, yeah. we're getting. I know our, our, our beaches, our beaches, the sun is golden. Like some, some sun is golden and some sun look like silver. And the water is crystal clear like glass. It's an awesome place to be. Have you got good scuba diving down there? Yes, we do. Ah, there's another one of the things I like to do. Uh, you can, we have an on, a underwater museum. An underwater museum? What's that all about? Oh, that's in the parish of St. James. Where we have ships are wrecked, and you you can go with the the humpback turtles. You see a lot of fish, and you see the coral. It's a beautiful sight. Use a glass bottom boats, and you go and have a nice. Yeah, view. you have glass bottom boats, which the bottom of the boat is glass, and you the the driver takes you out, and you can see there, or you can even we have a submarine here, where it takes you on tours. Underwater tours. Uh, well, a lot of that stuff is great for sighted people, but I don't know mm -hmm. so well. No, you can go on, go the, on the submarine there, uh, oh, yeah. audio yeah. descriptors. Yeah. Yeah. But I like to go scuba diving because I like feeling like I'm flying. Where are you at? If I get close enough to a big Three, fish. Four. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, you can scuba dive here. Uh -huh. yeah. You can scuba dive here. Anyways, guys, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Roger. And uh, and, and, and uh, I wanna Linda and um, oh, Rudy. Thank you all very much. Um, the, Rudy, national, Rudy. the National okay. United Society of Blind would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share this moment with you. We do appreciate it, and we look forward for a long-lasting relationship with you all.
You take care and continue to do the good work. Well, we'd like to thank everyone from the National United Society of Blind Barbados. Uh, and we're all, and let's see, and we, all of your recipes are on our website, which is www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Yes. So to try uh, try some of your scrumptious scrumptious, you'll find them there at our website. And uh, thank you all of our from our virtual audience for being today. Yeah. You, it, it's you guys that uh, you're able to follow us on Cook Without Looking uh, YouTube channel. Next taping is Friday, July 9th at 3 p.m. And hey, for me yeah. personally, Everybody who watched, you're wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Bye.